let's take a look at default root injection from a network virtual appliance that's inside a spoke VNet that's hanging off a virtual WAN hub. So the scenario here is you're working with a vendor or you've chosen to deploy a virtual appliance that can't live inside of the virtual WAN hub. You've put it in a spoke, but you still want to route traffic destined to the internet through that virtual appliance, whether it be from another spoke or as we'll show later in the video, from a express route connected resource, whether it be on premises or something like Azure VMware solutions. So the idea of this video is to not really show anything new per se, but rather dive into the routine, show the options that we have and basically explain how everything's working because we've got good feedback in the past that these videos help supplement the official documentation. A simple topology, I've got a Cisco CSR here in the spoke, which is going to be my internet egress point. So this will perform SNAP from internal IPs out to the internet. So they will sit behind a overload statement or port address translation to the PIP on the outside of the CSR. If you want to have a quick start yourself for building this lab out, I'd recommend checking out a couple of repositories that you can combine to make this a bit quicker. So first one would be Jeremy Wright has got a lab here with virtual WAN, which I based mine on, where the CSR config is available, which is normally the bit that slows people down who are not familiar with Cisco. It also includes the AZCLI commands required to build out the virtual WAN environment. In this case, using static routing, I'll show you both static routing and BGP. But down here, the, the very simple CSR config effectively says here, take my inside IPs and tell the CSR how to get to them, allow these IPs on the inside to be snatted, use my outside interface for snat, and then on Cisco, you have to define what is inside and what is outside. Also, Daniel mauser has got a lab if you want to expand on the virtual one scenario and go a bit wider, maybe you want to look at default root propagation, how that's required between pubs or two on-premises. Uh, this is a great lab again to start with that. Okay, back to my diagram. So let's first of all have a look at the spoke here, the CSR. This is my single CSR virtual machine. A couple of things to call out, sort of basics with NVAs and virtual WAN. One would be of course, the VNet within which this NVA lives is going to inherit the virtual WAN injected default route. So if you don't want to create a routine loop on the outside interface of the CSR, you will need to override that and set net prop internet. So you see on the outside interface here, I can see my next top is set to internet with a UDR called to internet assigned to the subnet for the, the outside interface there. And the other one to call out would be if you're using NSGs on the inbound interface, of course, you need things like IP forwarding enabled on the NIC, but just remember it will be receiving traffic from your virtual network. So the source will be virtual network or from that, that tag that represents virtual network that will include on-prem prefixes. The destination is going to be internet. So as well as allowing VNet to VNet, in the default rules, you will also need to allow a virtual network to internet to allow the snap box to perform its internet egress function. This is the CSR box itself. Not much interesting happening here. We've got the, the outside interface, the inside interface, both allocated via DHCP. A couple of things that sometimes catch people out is making sure you define your static routes internally for your inside subnets pointing to the right interface, the right Azure default gateway. So for example, we'll see that these are my spoke ranges, that's a spoke range. And in, later in the video is 10.58 range, that's my AVS environment. I'm sort of pointing that back out of the right interface so that I get symmetry in my flows. Also here, I'll show you the PGP config. So we can see relatively simplistic, but a really important call out here, which is when we're peering to the virtual WAN hub, 
So these neighbor statements here, 192, 168, 2.68, 2.69. These are both my virtual WAN hub, virtual hub router instances. You need to make sure you peer with both instances of the hub router, otherwise you'll get some strange routing occurring. So a relatively straightforward, peer to both of those endpoints, activate the neighbor, and then on Cisco, this is how you originate a default route. So I can run the command here to show the routes that I'm advertising to my neighbor. And I can see that I'm originating the default route as we want. Okay, so let's work backwards here. If I go to my virtual WAN hub, let's have a look at the other end of that BGP connection. So I've defined a BGP peer here, the 10.1.1.4, that's the inside of my CSR. Here are my BGP peer and IPs. They're reflected on the CSR config. This is defined and this is online at the moment. We can confirm that by looking at the effective routes. Here within my default table, my default route is known via BGP connection. Next top is this VNet here. That's the VNet within which my MBA lives. There's the autonomous system that my CSR lives in. A couple of other things to point out whilst we're here. 10.58, later in the video, remember that that's my Azure VMware Solutions environment hanging off Fire Express route. You can see here the, the 398 AS, that's the special AS used by AVS. If you've worked with AVS, you'll recognize that. And then we've got some other prefixes down here, which are some of my spoke ranges in, a, in another hub. And then the local hub ranges, the 172.16.4.0, that's a, a local spoke where I've got a test virtual machine. So here I am on a virtual machine in a spoke that's hanging off virtual WAN. This is in a different spoke to the, the CSR NVA. If I do a curl out to this special website that returns the IP address that I appear as, you see that it sees me coming from this IP 20.119.176.97. And we can reconcile that with our CSR config here as a public IP 20.119. 176.97. So that is indeed this traffic's going from this virtual machine to the virtual WAN hub. The virtual WAN hub router is then processing the packet and sending it to this VNet connection here, onwards to my CSR. And that second line there is enabled by the control plane of BGP peer in between the virtual hub router and the Cisco CSR. Again, remember what I said earlier, make sure when you're doing BGP peering that you peer to both instances of the virtual hub router. Okay, so let's take this one step further and show how it would work with a on-premises or express route connected resource. So again, CSR originating default route into virtual WAN. With virtual WAN, you can then propagate that default route that's floating around in your hub to connections to the express route gateway. So I've got an express route gateway inside a virtual WAN that is connected to an express route circuit here that happens to be connected me to an Azure VMware solutions environment. And if you know AVS, inside of AVS, there's concepts of tier zero switches being connected to the outbound world of express route, which then connects you to tier one routers, and the segments, and then I've got a virtual machine on AVS with the IP address 10.58.10.10. Back inside of my virtual WAN hub here, if I look at the express route gateway configuration, I can see down the bottom here, this is my Azure VMware solution circuit that I've connected. And if I edit the connection, I've made sure here that I'm propagating that default route. That's effectively saying if there's a default route available in the hub, whether it's learned by a static route, BGP, or a secured hub with Azure Firewall, propagate that default route onwards to that express route connection. One thing to call out specific here to AVS is inside of your STDC config in the portal, you have to choose on AVS fundamentally how it gets to public internet resources, whether they are non-Microsoft or Microsoft IPs and Microsoft PaaS services. We have varying options now, so you can tell it to break out using the default snap configuration which behind the scenes will be using 
uh, outbound internet access with a sort of Microsoft managed secure virtual hub, or that's the option here, or you can tell it to use a, use the new preview feature of public IP on the AVS itself. So in that scenario, it will go straight out of AVS onto the Microsoft backbone and not go anywhere near a virtual network resource. Or if you want to control the default route using the method that I'm showing you, where you inject the default route from a VNet or a virtual WAN hub, you need to select this first option here. And that will basically allow the tier zero to accept the default route from your DMSE circuit and follow this path in this direction here. Let's jump down to the Azure VMware solutions environment to verify our default route propagation and the fact that it's usable. Again, remember this could be your on-premise environment. I'm just using this as an example and also to add some additional value here around the AVS interop. So I can jump on the NSX team manager and look at the tier zero config to check if my default route get in through there. Here on the tier zero gateway, if I look at the routing table, it's a bit of a eye chart, but inside of there, the important lines here are the default route with next hop of some internal IPs that we don't have to worry about. And then to round this out and finish the demonstration, I've jumped here via the vSphere client, opened up a web console to my test virtual machine. This could be, a, for example, test VM on premises. In this case, it's a test VM hosted on an AVS segment with the IP address 10.58.10.10. And we can see if I do the same curl here, I get back the same IP address. So that's showing that the traffic, if we jump back to the whiteboard, let's think about the end-to-end -end flow. The default route is being injected by the CSR via BGP peer into virtual WAN. Virtual WAN Express Route Gateway is advertising that to the circuit. Circuit's advertising it to the internal AVS tier zero and tier one infrastructure. So our virtual machine, when it resolves the domain name for ifconfig.io, ultimately it follows this route here, gets to my CSR, and when it goes out to the internet, it's snatted behind the public IP that exists there, which is the IP address that we, we just saw in the command line. Okay, the last thing we'll do in the video here is just to highlight one other option we have for CSR or NVA to virtual WAN configuration. So at the moment we saw how we've got resilient BGP peerings from the CSR to the virtual WAN hub. But what if you didn't want to run BGP or the NVA didn't support BGP? Is there another option? And the answer is yes. So we can get rid of the BGP peering here and we can instantiate logic on the virtual WAN hub to effectively statically route. So I can come into the default route table and say, get web last resort, go to this IP address here. And if this was a highly available pair, you could point it to a low balance or any spoke as well. So let me update the config and I'll, I'll show you how that looks. On my virtual WAN hub, I'm going to drop this BGP peer in. We can see that if we jump to the CSR, we can indeed see that those BGP peers have gone idle 12 seconds ago because they've been torn down on the virtual WAN side. If I try and do a curl or any sort of connectivity here from my test VM, that's not going to work now. It doesn't have a default route. Inside of my virtual WAN effective routes, I no longer have a default route flying around inside of the hub. Therefore, I'm not propagating one to express route. So let's fix this with a static route. So I'll come into my default route table here. I'm going to define a static route. Next up is the VNet connection that's got my NVA inside. And then I need to make sure I specify the appropriate IP address. Okay, so my static route is saved now. Remember, BGP is down. Define my static route. Recheck in my virtual one hub default route table. I can see that I now have a default route, but it's learned via static route to a VNet connection. BGP is still down on my CSR. If I go back to my test client on AVS, 
we can see once again that snaps working. So just to go back to the diagram, play that back again. CSR is now just sat there in a spoke, which is VNet connected to the virtual WAN hub. Inside of VWAN, there's a static route pointing at this IP address. So this this default route origination is effectively not happening at a BGP level there. It's purely statically defined. And because that static defined default route bounces around in the hub, this default route origination that happens here, in terms of the circuit and how it sees the world, it's exactly the same, right? It's got no idea that the default route is, is coming from some sort of, sort of other source in the virtual WAN hub. And the flow down here is exactly the same. If you wanted to go one step further and maybe verify on the CSR that that traffic's passing by the CSR, you could you could check the NAT translations. So you can see that the ifconfig.io website is behind this IP, 172.64.194. We jump back to my CSR. We can indeed see that we've got a, a NAT translation, ICMP from my AVS host, going out to the, the global IP of this, this website here. Anyway, I hope you found it uh, useful. Uh, fundamentally, we've shown here there's two ways of getting a default route out of VWAN to a virtual appliance inside of a spoke. BGP peer in, make sure you connect to both virtual hub instances, or you can use a static route. And that internet egress point can then be used by other VNets in Azure. But also, if you have a requirement to effectively force tunnel traffic into Azure out to the internet, especially with scenarios like AVS, then this is also going to work. Hope you find it useful and speak to you soon.